Hello friends, today in this video, we are going to discuss about dynamic programming. So dynamic programming is a very important concept when it comes to uh, solving problems. Okay, so what is dynamic programming? So dynamic programming is a technique to solve the recursive problems in more efficient manner. Many times in recursion, we solve the sub problems repeatedly. Okay, so Many times when we solve the problem using recursion, what we do is uh, we solve the sub problems again and again. Okay. So in dynamic programming, we store the solution of these sub problems, right? So that we don't have to solve them again. And storing the solution of these sub problems is called memoization. Okay. We'll uh, see an example in a moment. So uh, uh, dynamic programming, there are two important components. One is recursion and one is memoization. So recursion, solve the sub problems recursively and memoization, store the solution of these sub problems so that we don't have to solve them again. So let's take an example of uh, Fibonacci sequence or series. So what is Fibonacci series? Uh, in Fibonacci series, uh, every number is sum of previous two numbers, right? So every number is the sum of previous two numbers, right? And first two numbers, which are the base cases, are 0 and 1. So what is the Fibonacci sequence? So first two numbers are 0 and 1, right? And then from there on, every number is the sum of previous two numbers. So the next number is 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 1 plus 2, 3, 2 plus 3, 5, 3 plus 5, 8, 8 plus 5, 13, and so on, right? So let's say um, you have to write a function. Uh, let's say function is fn, and uh, which will return the nth element in the Fibonacci sequence, right? So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So let's say if you call for 7, that function would return 13, right? So um, how we'll implement that function? So let's say we have to solve it for 5, right? So for five, we need to know the previous two elements, that is four and three, right? So what we'll do, we'll make a recursive call, right? We'll make a recursive call and pass four and three, right? So when we are solving this uh, for four, we'll make a recursive call to three and two. Here, um, two and three. 1. So here, uh, 2 and 1. And this is 1 and 0. Same here, 1 and 0. OK? So we know the first two elements are 0 and 1. So we know f of uh, 0 is 0 and 1 is 1. Right, so these are the base cases. And this will also one and zero. So once recursion comes here, we'll return one and zero. So this will return, uh, two will return one plus zero is equal to one, right? So this will return one, so one plus one, f of 3 will return 2. Similarly, this will return 2 from here. And uh, 2 will return 1. So this will 3 and 3 plus 2, 5. This one, right? So now if you notice, we are solving many subproblems repeatedly, right? For example, this one. 
right? Or this one. When we are solving it for two, right? You see how many um, same recursive call we are making, right? So what it does is uh, it will increase the runtime complexity, right? So let's go back to the uh, problem. So Fibonacci um, series, uh, first two elements are zero and one. And then uh, for n greater than one, the sum of previous two numbers. So this is the uh, recursive solution uh, for the uh, Fibonacci series. So we are passing x and these two are base cases. If x is zero or one, we'll return zero or one. Else, what we'll do, we'll make a recursive call to previous two numbers, add that and return, right? So there is the uh, similar uh, example. So now you can see in the picture above, while we are calculating for four, we are making call for three and two and for three, two, one. So basically solving uh, many sub problems again and again, right? So what is the time complexity here? So for every number, right? Every number, we are making two recursive calls, right? So what, time, what is the time complexity? Two power n, which is pretty high, right? So now we'll see um, how uh, using dynamic programming, we'll reduce the time complexity. So memoization. So we already discussed what is memoization that we store the sub problems result so that we know we don't have to calculate again okay and uh, this is one example so this is bottom up approach we'll see that uh, in a minute now first let's understand uh, two major properties of dynamic programming okay so you have given a problem right and now you have to decide whether this problem can be solved using dynamic programming or not, right? How would you do that? So basically you will look for two properties in the problem, right? And if those two properties are present, that means this problem can be solved using dynamic programming. So what are the two properties? Overlapping sub problems and optimal substructure, right? So. Uh, let's understand that. So overlapping subproblems, right? So overlapping subproblems, as the name suggests, subproblems need to be solved again and again, right? In recursion, uh, we solve these problems every time. In dynamic programming, we solve these subproblems only once. So you see, overlapping of subproblems. That means subproblems are overlapping. That means we are solving this same problem many times. So for example, here we have seen that we are solving the uh, many sub problems repeatedly in order to get the result for f of five, right? So that is overlapping sub problems. Now, the second one is optimal substructure. So if the problem can be solved using the solution of the sub problems, right? So we are solving the sub problems, right? We are solving the sub problems and the problem can be solved using the solution of the sub problem. So what is the problem here? We need to calculate for F of five, right? Fifth element in the Fibonacci sequence. And what are the sub problems? We'll calculate for four and three. So if we use the solution of sub problems, use the solution of sub problems, we'll solve our problem, right? So we can say that the problem has optimal substructure property, right? So first thing, solving the sub problems, overlapping sub problems, and then using those uh, solution, using the solution of those sub problems, we can get the we can solve our uh, final problem, right? So if these two properties are present, the problem can be solved using dynamic programming, okay? So now dynamic programming has two approaches, bottom-up and top-down. 
so first let's understand bottom up approach okay so bottom up approach as name suggest we start from the bottom and we go up right that means we start uh, from the smallest possible sub problem then we go to the next smallest sub problem and then go to the next smallest sub problem and so on right so let's say um, um, we have to calculate this is our function which gives the uh, fifth element in the Fibonacci sequence and we have to implement bottom up approach right so we have to calculate it for five so we'll start from the bottom that means smallest possible sub problem right so what is the smallest possible sub problem is f of zero right so let's say this is our um, array and in dynamic programming we'll store these results right store the results of sub problems so here we are going to use array to store the result so first two are base cases so f of zero is zero and one is one so this is zero one two three four five we need to calculate for five right now what is the next smallest sub problem which is two now two is 0 plus 1, 1. Store the result. Right? Then calculate for 3, which is 1 plus 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. Similarly, 1 plus 2, 3. Now, when we need to calculate for 5, we already solved all the sub problems, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll take the previous two elements, which is 2 plus 3 and put it here, right? So this is bottom up approach. So we'll start from the bottom. That means the smallest possible sub problem. So let's look at the code. Uh, so we have uh, taken an array to store the result. And these two are base cases, f of zero and f of one, right? Now we'll iterate from uh, two to uh, x, right? Uh, less than equal to x or less than x plus 1. So we'll take the previous two element, add those and store it in the array, right? And finally, our output is going to be the last element at the last index, right? Which is 5. So this is bottom up approach. So if you see the time complexity here is uh, O of N. Why? Because we are solving the sub problems only once and storing the result in the array. So from two power N, we have reduced it to O of N. And we have a space complexity is o, o of N because we are creating an array to store the result, right? So, yeah, now let's discuss about top-down approach. So, top-down, right? So, as the name suggests, here we'll start from the top and then we'll come down, right? The bottom-up approach was start from the bottom and then go up this is top down start from the top so for example again we'll take the same example we need to find the uh, fifth element in the fibonacci sequence so what we'll do we'll make a recursive call to find for four and three right then We'll make a recursive call to three, two, and this is two, one, and this is 
1 and 0, right? Now we'll see the difference between recursive solution and dynamic programming top-down approach, okay? Here also, we are making the recursive calls, but there's a difference. We'll see that. So this will return one and zero, and then this will return one. Now we have calculated for two, right? We have calculated F of two. So we'll store this result right? We'll store this result somewhere, right? Now, this is, again, this will return 1. So, 1 plus 1 is 2. So, this will return 2. So, before returning 2, we'll store the result for 3 as well. So, we'll store the result somewhere, right? When, when it comes here, we'll not make any recursive call, right? Before making recursive call, we'll see if we have solved this problem before, right? Which we have already. So we'll use this result. We'll not make any further recursive call. We'll use this result, which is zero plus one. So we stored one here. So we'll return one. So two plus one, three. And now when it comes here, right? will not make any recursive call. Why? Because we have already solved it for three and store the result. So we'll use this result, which is two. So we'll just return two. So in top-down approach, we'll make recursive calls, but before making the recursive call, first we'll check if we have already solved this problem. And if yes, use the solution of the problem. Else make a recursive call, get the solution, store it, and then return it. So this will return five. So here also, we are solving all the subproblems only once. So you have solved um, for two only once. Here we have used the stored result. And for three, we have solved only once. And here we have used the stored results. So that time complexity here is O of n and the space complexity is O of n, right? So let's go back to the code and uh, yeah, break down the problems in the sub problems, solve them as needed, store the solution for the future. So here, here also we are using an array to store the result. So these two are base cases. Right, and this is our recursive function, top down. So if you see before making any recursive call, what we are doing here is we are doing a lookup. We are doing a lookup in the in the array to find out whether we have already solved it for n. If yes, return that, use that uh, result. No need to make these recursive calls. If we have not solved it, right, then it will come to the else part make these recursive calls, right? Store the solution in the array and then return, right? Solve it, store the result and then return, right? So this is the top-down approach. Um, <clears throat> which one is better? Uh, it depends on the problem. Uh, in future videos, we'll solve uh, many interesting problems uh, using these two approaches. Um, and then we'll see which one um, is a better pick. So you can click here, um, click these buttons to run this uh, run this code to understand it better. Um, yeah, now we have completed it. So we'll mark this uh, post as completed. And uh, please visit our website, tutorialhorizon.com for more interesting problems. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.